What's up, Neon peeps? We're back. There's a new trailer. I'm going to do a breakdown for you guys today. It is the Destiny 2 Lightfall Neomuna trailer. I went frame by frame and found some really cool details. Wasn't expecting to do a breakdown, but I love it. So let me know if I miss anything in this video in the comments. I do read them. I really appreciate the support from the last video. So yeah, let's uh, get down to the breakdown. Let's get down into the breakdown. What? Just look at this place. We always thought we were the last ones left. So jumping right into it, we're looking at the opening shot and we get a nice view of Neomuna's cityscape showing us how massive this map will be. We hear a ghost speaking and this is the only time we actually hear a ghost in the trailers. We never see a ghost, we only hear it, making me wonder what happened to the traveler. Did you also notice that camera roll effect? I'm not a film major, but I do know certain camera movements are used to capture certain emotions, as said in this video. A roll turns the camera on its long axis while maintaining the direction of the lens. A camera roll is disorienting, unsettling our equilibrium. Simply put, I think Bungie is trying to tell us subliminally that Lightfall Strand Niamuna is going to shake things up. Continuing my theory with that is also the glass breaking that is hinting at a more destructible environments like windows and doors in the open world, as well as breaking the barrier with Strand. Welcome to Neptune, Lightbearer. I hope we can find common ground, or at least common enemies. At around 8 seconds, we see our Guardian riding their sparrow through the streets, being shot at by Vex. We also see Vex to the right, so this is probably the edge of town. I'm just curious, why are the Vex on Niamuna? At around 9 seconds, we see Callus's paint job on the Cabal Harvester ship. It's landing, and these are the ships that drop troops on the field. Also notice the sign to the left. This is a very Braytech style sign, and I think we'll see a lot of Clovis Brain style design across Niamuna. At around 11 seconds, we see Threshers roaming the sky, reminding me of Halo ODST vibes. It looks like they're searching for something or maybe just on a patrol, but we do see another point of view of this later in the trailer. My question is, what is that golden bubble down there? Looks like some sort of safety dome. I don't know, but it is highlighted, so it is pretty interesting. At around 13 seconds, our guardian transmats in with the warlock holding Quicksilver, the titan holding Neomuna's loud lullaby, and the hunter holding Neomuna's reskin of the moon SMG. The yellow holograms, I believe, will be the people of Neomuna and some sort of higher air AI intelligence, like they evolved from mortal bodies into some sort of computer hologram, and the golden glow could be a reference of them surviving from the golden age. I don't know, just don't correct me, you lore nerds. At around 14 seconds, we hear our silver surfer, Seraph, Cloud Strider ally talk. Remember, there can only be two Cloud Striders at once, like the Sith rule of two in Star Wars, but for good guys. So we see the older one transmatting in with his surfboard on the back, and the younger one sitting on his surfboard. Callus is ready to annihilate this city. Stand with me to defend the Amuna and its people. At around 21 seconds, remember that golden bubble? There it is again. So the previous shot was taken up there, and now we can see the ground view. This is also emphasizing the verticality and size of Neomuna. To the right, we see some sort of energy conductor spewing out Aurora Borealises. At around 21 seconds, Cabal send in six drop pods that seem to be launching from Callus's dock ship. In the next few seconds, some people theorize that this might be a before and after shot of the Cabal destroying this area, but I really just think it's just the area right around the corner, as you can see with the architecture. At around 23 seconds, Seconds. Next, we see the destruction that Callus's ship has caused to the suburbs. I believe the ship will be called the Oblivion because he mentions that later in the trailer, and it does look like the Almighty, but we'll cover that a little bit later. We do have our guardians running up that hill to destroy Vecna, I mean Callus, and the Cloud Strider says to stand with him to defend Niamuna and its people. So it does confirm there are some sort of populace here on Niamuna, which again, I think have evolved into holograms. At around 20 seconds, we see the ghost that everybody wants. I believe this fish is called the Puka, and we saw it first in Beyond Light with the Exo Stranger, which begs the question, what does Elsie Bray know about Neomuna, and why hasn't she said anything? Our Guardian is meditating in the next something, this could be where we meditate for Strand. The use of incense has also been an important aspect of Buddhism, and it's also typically referenced with discovering the path to enlightenment with meditation, so this could be the start of the journey to Strand. We also see some Neomunites in the background, so this might be like a Neomunite church or temple. We will also see a different view of this later in the trailer.
At around 32 seconds, the Guardian sparrows off into multiple scenes, and this may confirm a day or night cycle, or at least showing how massive the environment is of Neomuna. And the last two of these scenes actually have details you might have missed. The first being that the Season of Arrivals Contact public event is in the background, or at least something similar to that. But we also have this little green strand orb in the sky, and we see this throughout the trailer, but this might be something around how on Europa you have that stasis areas that regenerate your abilities faster. I believe it's like the Eclipse Zone. And then the last one, we also have the Vex overlay across the city in the sky. So maybe we are all in the simulation. Maybe Elon was right. I don't know. But my guess is this is the seasonal activity that we will deal with the Vex as you see a pattern. Typically in the seasons, we go from this season, which was dealing with the Hive, Plunder, we dealt with the Fallen, Haunted, we dealt with the Scorn, Risen, we dealt with the Cabal, Lost, we dealt with the Taken, and before that, it was the Vex. I'm guessing we're on that full rotation, and now we're going to go into a Vex seasonal activity. At around 38 seconds, we are now indoors, and to the left, we actually see the Neomunites drinking their flat whites and pour over coffees while we take on the darkness. What a bunch of hipsters. But seriously though, it is interesting because each Neomunite actually has a different color glow in them. So maybe it's representing different classes somehow, like Strand, Void, or Arc. What's really cool though is that the plant in the middle is an Indian coral tree, also known as a tiger's claw. It's a part of the Eritrenia variegata class. I'm totally butchering that name, by the way. It is found in a lot of mystical paintings or just places talking about paradise or heaven. So this could be a significant in terms of lore representing New Moon's culture or just maybe a pretty 3D asset. We do see the incense table to the right as well. At around 40 seconds, we see the puka in the top left and then some sort of hollow projector person on the bottom right. I do like that we have a lot of indoor sequences, so that'll be a nice change of going inside a lot of places. But here is the big part. The wall here looks like coffins or USB drives. So I'm wondering if the New Moonites are hybrid hibernating in these pods and then they're moving about the city like golden holograms. <laughs> oh, is that you, my tenacious little guardian? So good of you to be tonight's entertainment. At around 41 seconds, we see the young Cloud Strider take on the Vex. However, we see what looks like a Wyvern Tails at the top, so maybe these are two different scenes. Around 44 seconds, Kallus' new darkness form is shown laughing like it did back in the previous expansions. Around 46 seconds, it looks like we're inside Kallus' ship. I do hope that we get some sort of menagerie type event again. That'd be amazing. And also, we see enemies in case, like in Rulk's Pyramid, just similar to how we also see it in Star Wars' the Obi-Wan show, which is theorized for how maybe Palpatine returns by taking the force from the encased. So maybe this could just be a show of trophies, but it could also be something of getting energy to the enemies. I never did the Vow of the Disciple raid. Don't hate at me if I'm wrong. <gasps> at around 49 seconds, we see the hunter running next to the pipes, which you think from the previous scene would be connected. I think you're wrong because in the next scene, and you'll definitely have missed this, but we are on board an enemy ship using the darkness. In the background, out the window, you see a bunch of other ships. We're in space. I think we transmit aboard the enemy ship from that previous trailer, and then we go through the ship Ship, take out the enemies, and this is how we end up arriving to Niamuna aboard an enemy ship as a stowaway. Around 51 seconds, a big cannon shoots, and we get some scenes of how the Cabal are taking over Niamuna. At 52 seconds, we see Kallus' forces trying to break into the building with Niamuna's security torts aiming at them, but I bet you didn't notice not just this green strand orbs, but Keitel's forces down in the bottom right. That's right, I'd recognize those blue feather tips anyway. I can't wait to see the daughter and father reunion. At around 53 seconds, we see the royal beasts? Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but were they always gray skinned or is this just a new skin for them? Reskin! 55 seconds, the Guardian is now interacting with a strand point, so this is probably the part of the campaign, like in Red War, where we go to get our power back from the Traveler Shard, so this could be how we go and get strand. At 56 seconds, introducing the Tormentor, the one nipple light bully. This enemy looks sick, and based off the setting, it looks like we get into Kallus' hangar and do some damage because some of the ships are on fire, and we feel victorious. We're like, we're gonna go take on Kallus, and then the Tormentor shows up and is like, nah, you dead, son. Some theorize that the Tormentor takes away our light in this scene, and we feel suppressed, so then we go meditate, and then we go get Strand. So one theory is also that maybe Strand is something the Tormentor can't suppress. It can only suppress light abilities. I mean, literally, the Tormentor takes our light and then we fall 
Isn't this literally light fall in front of us? Minute four seconds, we have this really cool falling scene, again, showing the massive scale and verticalness, verticality of Niamuna. At a minute five seconds, we have a nice glimpse into what is probably Kallus' ship. And in one minute and seven seconds, it looks like some sort of rocket silo that we're falling into. And then we see our guardian grapple, and you can actually see the Titan and Warlock jumping off and grappling as well. I really like that you can see the city street and the street lamps, and also the rooftop here. It just shows that there's going to be a lot of movement, jumping, and it's going to be really fun to explore Niamuna. Is this all the Traveler's Chosen Guardians can muster? <laughs> you cannot escape oblivion. Embrace the end. At a minute 10 seconds, it changes scenes to a Vex network, which probably explains how the Vex are on Niamuna through like portals and stuff. But why are they here? Maybe for that hunt of booty, but who knows? All we know is Kallus' forces don't like the Vex and the Vex don't like Kallus because they're shooting at each other in this scene. At a minute 12 seconds, we see a green explosion and green grenades. So maybe the green goblin is here. Hello, my dear. Spider-Man crossover. So either a strand grenade ability or possibly a strand grenade launcher. However, I don't see a grenade launcher anywhere. So I'm guessing it's probably in ability. At a minute 14 seconds, we are in the typical retro synthwave arcade with the hunter either using a melee or super. But I think it's a melee because the green eye fades away immediately after. Similar to the warlock's ranged melee in stasis, I think this is kind of the similar animation for the hunter. In the background, we see the warlock, I believe, sliding and shotgunning and the titan running up the steps with Quicksilver. There's actually some volatile rounds in here, but I'm not sure how that was procced. Uh, at a minute 16 seconds, the warlock, aka Broodweaver, has an ability to summon strand companions and here we have a first look at them attacking the royal beast. Seems like there is some strand orb that maybe targets the area for where the strand beast should attack, kind of like a secret grenade or an AoE effect, but we'll just have to see and find out. At a minute 20, we have a tank bursting onto the streets, taking down threshers. Minute 21 seconds, we see the titan and its super charging a tormentor with the hunter grappling in air. The tormentor has an orange glow at the start, so maybe it's using a melee or torment ability, and the warlock is sliding in with that shotgun again, and it looks like the one small step from the moon. At a minute 23 seconds, we get that final shot of the city and just look how massive Kallus' ship is. And again, he says you can't escape Oblivion. So this ship does look like the Almighty, so maybe this will be the successor, the Oblivion. Hmm? Overall, Bungie is nailing it with these previews. I think they are intentionally trying to show us how big Niamuna is. I do believe it will have some amazing moments and secrets to explore and I can't wait to play it. Let me know if I got anything wrong or if you disagree or if you found something that I totally miss. I love reading your guys' comments and several of you pointed out some good details that I missed in the first video. So I always appreciate those comments. And like I said, my aim is for a thousand subscribers by June. So if you like this content, please feel free to contribute to that goal and hit that like button and subscribe. I will either see you in the stream or in the next video. Peace.